Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make a DIY Dollar Tree Easy Farmhouse Pinterest inspired monogram decor. So first thing you're going to need is this 12 and a half inch square picture frame, an 8 inch square canvas art, black paint to go with your monogram letter. I got this one at Walmart. Or you can cut out a printable. You could use some jute cord, some burlap fabric. This is from the Dollar Tree, but if you can't find it, they sell it at Walmart. You're also going to use some burlap ribbon, regular or wire edged. We're going to use some paint is optional, scissor and an exacto knife is optional. And you're going to need your glue gun. First thing we're going to do is if you choose to use the wooden letter, then we're going to go ahead and paint it. Um, the Pinterest inspired art was using black letters with black frame and natural jute, which is my color scheme. So I went with that. But if you have more of blue tones, or the white white and neutral tones, you can go ahead and paint it your choice. I, of course, went with blue. I got this H at Walmart for $1.47. It is really my only option around here besides Dollar General and the Dollar Tree. Um, but if you live by a craft store, I know that some of them have cheaper letters. Dollar, I heard someone say that Target has cheaper letters as well. And also, some of the other stores, you can get more fanciful letters if that's what you desire. Um, the other option is if you don't want to spend any money on this, um, you can take a printable from the computer and you can um, cut it out of poster board and you can use that instead. If you do do that, I take a black Sharpie on the edge of my black poster board so that it looks like it's completely finished. Now here is this canvas art, and I showed you that with the burlap through it, you can see the art through the canvas, I mean through the burlap, excuse me. So you have an option. You can either paint this white with spray paint or craft paint, or you can cover it in craft paper. Um, I thought that this was the cheapest option because a lot of you have brown paper bags laying around, or you get some of this craft paper in packages that's wrapped up. Or if you don't, then this craft paper, you get a lot of material for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. So you could use it for a lot of different craft projects. And I'm wrapping it like you would wrap a canvas, but then I realized not everybody might not know how to wrap a canvas. <laughs> so I'm just using glue and I'm following along the edges. I'm folding so that I don't have too much material on the inside. And I'm, um, what I do is I fold it up on the edge and create the crease where the fold would be. I wrap it around and then I fold the edge and I pull it back open and I fold exactly where that crease would be. I tuck in the sides and you just want it to be neat. We're going to end up wrapping it in burlap so it's not about it looking finished on um, the paper edge. The paper is just to disguise um, the canvas. Now this canvas art is 8 inch square approximately and you can do this with a different shaped picture frame as long as you get a canvas that is smaller than the picture frame and the same shape. So if you had a rectangular picture frame, then go ahead and get a rectangular canvas art. Or I found out, if you guys have been around, I found a 97 cent plaque from the Dollar Tree, which you could use, I'm not sorry, from Walmart, excuse me, that you could use in place. Um, and that's also rectangular. So as long as you like keep the same shape, it'll keep the same aesthetic, okay? And now we're going to wrap it in burlap. This burlap from the Dollar Tree is 18 by 12, I believe. Yeah, it's 18 by 12. So it, this is perfect size for this. And I did, in full disclosure, I will tell you that as you pull it, it can fray on you. So do, be gentle. And what you want to do, again, if you've ever wrapped a canvas, <laughs> if you haven't wrapped a canvas or repolstered a chair cushion or anything like that, what you do is you want to do one side and then do the opposing side and then worry about the two ends okay so what I've done is I've laid a strip of glue down over the paper and I and then sometimes um, the can the original canvas was actually like popping up so I just glue it underneath there whatever you feel like you need to do and then we're just gonna fold over opposing sides and I'm gonna zoom in here in a second to show you how I work a corner but you just want to be able to make sure you don't have too much bulk and, and you're really only going to see the front. So that's really what the big concern is. Um, so you see here, I, it's, as I showed you, it's pulling. So you just be a little careful. It starts to fray and the corner is starting to come through. But that's okay because we're going to cover that corner again. All right. And I'm cutting off the extra because you don't want a lot of bulk back there. 
So what I've done is I've tucked in the little corner first, okay, and then I've pulled up the side, okay, and just be careful, again, this is a really open weaved burlap, and glue will come through and bite your fingers if you're not careful. So let's see that again. We just glue in and tuck in the corner on a little bit of an angle and then pull the side straight down. And then lots of glue. For this kind of thing, I like to pull the fabric onto the, like pull the fabric tight and that's what pushes it into the glue. But you just have to hold it a second longer than you would normally do. And then at, when we're all done, we're gonna clean up the edges, but that's it. And just make sure you wanna make sure it's all secure down. So you can see here, I have like a little bit of extra. I'm just gonna throw some glue back there and tuck it around. Use your scissor if you need to. I've also seen somebody use like um, a flower stem from like old flowers, which I thought was a cool, neat idea. I wish I could just remember to get one. <laughs> okay, so um, the one thing I also wanted to show you is there's a sawtooth back there. I just peeled the sawtooth off with my scissor. So the next thing I'm gonna move on is to the picture frame as the glue cools off. We're just gonna take the back off the picture frame and we're gonna pull out the little metal tabs that hold the back in, okay? And um, you don't need the glass for this, but you could save it for another project. Um, this would be a perfect picture frame to do the glass wall art, and I'll link that in the iCards and in the description box down below. But that's just great for really for people who are live in apartments or like those wall clings, but would like to make them a little bit more permanent. So, um, you're just gonna go around. And what I did here, and I'm so sorry that I nudged the jar that holds the tripod, and I pulled the whole thing out of eye shot. But if you see the little silver marks on there, what I have done is I have marked the center of the side of the picture frame, which was at six and a quarter, and then I put the six and the quarter, moved my ruler over and put the six and the quarter mark on the two inch mark and then marked off on the zero and then marked off on the four because I thought a four inch wide wrapped area of, bur of, of jute would be like uh, aesthetically pleasing to me. So what I'm doing now is I'm wrapping the sectioned in jute. So like again, you could see there the three little dots and that's how I knew um, how much to wrap and I put them on the inside of the picture frame I just took the white paint pen from the white ornament paint pen that they have at the Dollar Tree to mark it off because I kept my picture frame black and I just wrapped you want to butt the uh, the jute up next to each other and I'm going to show you up close and a little bit slower in a second but I wanted to describe to you what we missed unfortunately um, so then once again I did was I took the measurement of my picture frame I found the halfway mark and I put a mark in the halfway mark of one of the sides of the picture frame. It's important that you just don't remember six and a half inches because if your picture frame is a rectangle, your long size will be different than your short size, obviously. And if your picture frame is a different size, it won't be a six and a half inch middle. So you want to measure one length of one side of your picture frame, find the middle, put a mark there. Determine how much jute wrapped area you want. Like I said, I thought found four inches to be aesthetically pleasing to me. So I put the two, moved my ruler over so that the two inch mark was in the middle mark that I had made. And then I made a mark at the zero and at the four. So now I knew that there was four inches and it was completely centered on the side. All right. And far as the jute wrapping is concerned, um, there are a couple of tips. Um, I started off, you start off by gluing on the back side, okay? And as you wrap it, I found I got a rhythm going pretty quickly. Um, I held the frame and the jute and I wrapped it um, around each side. And as I wrapped each row, I pulled it towards the existing rows. And I made sure that you try not to overlap. Um, it just, I found it looked much neater that way, much more professional, I guess, is the way I like to say. And you can see how fast it actually was going for me. I did this whole entire project in under an hour, um, start to finish, including painting the H and unwrapping all of the materials. <laughs> in fact, including gathering all the materials. Um, so 
Um, the other the other trick that I have is because I'm wrapping it upside down or you know inside out so I could see the markings. When I got to the halfway mark, I flipped it over to make sure that I was not leaving any spaces, not overlapping. I was making it neat, and then I continued to rest this wrap the second half of the way. And um, once you get to the end, you put a little glue a hot do a little glue a hot do a little do a hot glue a little drop a hot glue. <laughs> <laughs> and you secure the end of your jute. So here it is up close. I just wanted to show you guys up close real quick. So I'm taking a little bit of hot glue and I'm starting on the first mark. And then I found it easier to wrap um, towards me. So I put the string um, from the inside to the outside. And then I wrapped it towards me. And it's the first two rows or, or as much hot glue as you put down in the beginning. That's where you want to make sure that you wrap that perfectly in the beginning. Because you really won't have an opportunity to move it once the glue sets. But the rest of the rows, we don't glue them. So you can wrap a bunch and slide them down and then adjust them. And it's easy to adjust them. Um, it, say you make them too loose. Um, you just can take your fingers and you can twist them around. Um, almost like you're trying to tighten a roll of wrapping paper or uh, along those lines. So you can see here how fast it's going. This is actually in real time, this little close-up shot. This is not fast motion. This is just how fast it goes. Um, and you see how I'm sliding it down with my thumb each row. And then I get to the halfway point and I'm checking and making sure it's all good. And doing that, that little twisty thing is what I did to make sure it's tight. And like I said, I'm just holding it down with my finger as I go and pulling the roll, the rows in tight. Um, and as, if you find that you do have a space, just stop and adjust it. It's much easier than having to redo the whole thing over again, which is why we check at the halfway point, because you'd hate to get through the whole thing and then find that, oh, you left a hole back in the beginning. And then when you get towards the end, um, yeah, this is my fourth side. I'm starting to get tired. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> when you get... When you get towards the end, you think about how much glue you want to put down. Um, so if you're going to just put like um, a dot, then you don't have to leave too much. There you go. You see how I'm like rolling my thumb around there, like right there. And that's how I know that I'm getting it to stay tight. All right. And now I left, I can still see the dot. So I'm going to leave a little glue there. And I will tell you that when I was putting the ribbon on later, um, I felt I felt the need to go back and secure the ends um, of this. I felt like, um, especially the first, the beginning end of all of the ones that I did, I felt like it needed to go back and just to do it. And then I just cut it off where it touches as soon as the glue gets a little cool enough. And that's it. Now, um, Melissa at Four Quarter Crafts likes to trim her jute. She doesn't like furry jute or furry burlap, which is so cute. You can go ahead and trim it if you want, if you, if you, if you mind the fur. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the wire edge ribbon and we're taking a piece and we're gluing it to the back center of the canvas. Just pick whichever side looks right to you, which is going to be the up side. Then that's where you're going to go ahead and glue it. And now that that's settled, I've, um, worrying about spacing making sure you space it evenly, um, the canvas evenly in the frame, best you can, because you want it to hang neat. And then we're gonna glue the burlap ribbon to the frame. And that burlap ribbon is what is gonna suspend this canvas in the middle of this art. And you wanna make sure you use enough glue so that it holds really well over time, okay? And then I'm making sure I just put enough and it's all the edges. This is where I was telling you I was tacking down all the little edges there. So now I just have one little piece that's holding the frame to the canvas. All right. And now we're going to attach our monogram. Okay. If you chose to do a, just a thin cardboard cutout of poster board, um, then it would be much easier. You need a, a lot less glue to hold it to the canvas than if you do this heavy letter. But I wanted to make sure I had plenty of glue and I glued it all over. I turned it over and gave it a good pressing. I used my hot glue gun almost like an iron to make sure that the glue adhered. So now what I'm doing is I'm deciding, I'm designing. <laughs> um, I originally thought I wanted more of a modern bow 
which is sort of like you can see here it's just sort of like where you leave everything straight and the loops are all lined up and you put a big wide piece of the ribbon in the middle see it's very tailored it's a very modern looking bow but then I was like nah that's not me <laughs> I don't want to do that <laughs> So then I went ahead and I just made my traditional two loop bow. Um, I'll put that link for that description. No, what am I saying? Yeah, I'll put the link to that video in the description box down below and here in the I cards so that I could show you I have a video on how to make a quick and easy bow. Um, it really is super simple. You don't have to be crafty, trust me. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking a second piece. It's about five inches of the wire edge burlap and I am double layering the um where i'm going to attach the bow and where we're going to hang this from the pinterest inspired piece that they showed actually had a piece of jute going from the corners and the jute was actually what held it up i opted to not have that i just wanted to put a bow on there so i put glued a piece of burlap see right there so the burlap goes from the canvas to the frame to the bow First we have a piece that goes from the canvas to the frame and then we have a second piece that goes from the canvas to the frame to the bow. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie one of our little hangers that we always make out of a piece of jute, like one of those little loopies, noose things, and we're gonna glue that to the back of the bow. So it's actually going to hang from that piece, that secondary piece of burlap that we glued on there. And that's what's gonna support this whole piece. And trust me, it's not that heavy. It did support this whole piece. It's supporting it lovely, as a matter of fact. So you just want to make sure you glue down, secure all your edges, especially that bow, that ribbon. And really, folks, that is it. It just came out so lovely. It came out so much love, better than I thought it was going to be. Um, and that's it. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments down below. If you know anyone who would like to make one of these, please share this video with them. It really helps our channel grow. And if you haven't yet, Click subscribe, join the family. We'd love to have you. And once you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, you take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.